I have to tell you, it's always a fine thing to stand anywhere near the shadow of uh, Jim and Lori Groom. So it's a great honor and a privilege to be here today. Uh, I want to thank the University of Maryland, the Public Relations Society of America, and the Institute for Public Relations for the invitation to deliver this lecture. Now, uh, I've known Jim and Lori Grooney for some years, and like many others, uh, in the practice and in education, I've been enlightened by the abundant research that they've carried out. And I've been inspired by the passion for excellence that they bring to public relations programs. In fact, I've always felt, truthfully, with excellence theory, that that was also a pretty nice gift, a gift of hope and a kind of vision for the future of what public relations might be. Now, one of their concepts of culture for communication has long resonated with me. As Frank said, uh, Frank kept talking about my years here and years there, and it makes me just an old man, is what it makes me. Um, and it's a concept that I dealt with in practice and that I've long believed in the notion of a culture for communication. And it refers to an organizational culture that nurtures and is constituted by open communication, by two-way communication, and by an exchange of diverse ideas that people uh, can make without fear of any kind of retribution. It means a culture where leaders not only talk, but they listen, where people are recognized for achievement, and where diverse people seem to come together to, pursue, to achieve something other than satisfying mere self-interest. This is the kind of culture, in fact, in which most of us want to work. A study by the Families and Work Institute some years ago found that an open communication environment was the single most important quality that prospective employees saw in a workplace environment. So the concept of a culture for communication is really the framework for my topic today. Employee communication, or sometimes called internal communication, organizational communication. And for me, employee communication always has three dimensions, or sort of three sides to it. The first one is the best known, and that is the formal communications in organizations which are often orchestrated by communication professionals, speeches, intranets, newsletters, and so forth. The second dimension is the communications, in fact, which occur within, among, and across work groups and units in the organization. And the third piece, which is probably the most important, it's the nonverbal communication and the behaviors of the individuals who actually send or deliver the messages. Now, mostly 